Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Finally, we are starting the series of Ascendance again after three years and we have discussed till Cancer. And today is the time of the Leo Ascendant, Simha Lagna, Leo Lagna. So this will apply to anybody who has their Ascendant in Leo, not Sun sign, not Moon sign, Ascendant sign, all right? So where is your Ascendant? If it is in number five, Leo, then this works for you. Now, I've given this disclaimer for every Ascendant and I will do the same here also. What I'm saying here uh, will not apply 100% to you because if you see there are 12 Ascendants and around 6 to 7 billion people, so more than half a billion people, if you divide, uh, are Leo Ascendant. So it does not mean that uh, every, uh, every half a billion uh, people will have all these traits or will have none of these. Okay, so therefore... Uh, what I'm seeing here may match like uh, 15, 20 or 25 or maybe even 50% uh, with your actual self depending on other things. Okay, so what are those other things which will decide? So for example, uh, along with being a Leo Ascendant, if a uh, sun is in your Kendra houses, first four, uh, seventh, uh, tenth, and also if your Lagna Lord is in a fire sign, you know, then uh, which is again the sun in your case, uh, will be uh, it will match more okay because then the energy of the sun is more prominent and sun is your lagna lord okay uh, but nonetheless i am interested to know uh, what are the things that i say in this video matches with you and your nature or maybe somebody who you know already who is a leo ascendant right so please write your experiences down in the comments and i would also love to know how is your horoscope? So please write three things. Where is your Ascendant Lord, which is the sun? And where is your moon? And where is your Atma Karaka? Okay. That will actually help us to know how things are uh, formalizing in the horoscope. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. After watching it till the end, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him. And for consultations, my website is always down in the description section. All right. So what is Leo? Leo is number five. It is ruled by the planet Sun, Surya. So Leo Lagna is a very important Lagna because uh, the Sun in general is uh, the most important planet after the moon of course now what does the sun represent you know you have to understand this a bit like what is jupiter sun and moon these three are uh very important because you know along with mars these four are like natural friends right so we know lord ramachandra who is one of the avatars of lord vishnu who is actually a cancer ascendant but he's from the surya vansh okay so Sol solar dynasty so if you go back to ancestors uh, of Lord Ram, you will find uh, Surya Dev himself. So uh, <clears throat> you have to understand uh, that this is very important because if you have to understand uh, Leo ascendants or how their life pans out, you know, you, you have to look at Lord Ram and his life. You have to see Lord Rama's examples, how he acted, how he did not act, what what he did what he did not do okay so it's very important that you actually study his life so if you are from india then i'm sure you are always already aware of the ramayana and if you are from the west you are you have no idea that you can watch uh, some videos on ramayana uh, which will actually tell you how a leo ascendant should behave okay and it's very important that we try to uh, go in his footsteps okay so as the Srimad Bhagavatam says, like Mahajano Yena Gata Sapanta, which means we try to go uh, travel in the footsteps of the great personalities and Lord Ram is Vishnu himself. So it's very important that we um, try to inculcate some of the divine teachings of the Ramayana, like love, sacrifice, commitment, surrender, um, protection and all this. Okay, that will actually help us. And now... If we go to the Ascendant in itself, uh, we'll understand that the first house, which shows your existence, which is actually ruled by the sun. Now, as I said, what is the sun basically? You know, So if you want to understand sun, you have to first understand Jupiter and you also have to understand the moon. Without understanding this too, you cannot understand what is actually the sun. So 
Jupiter, in essence, represents our pure spiritual self, okay, our spiritual identity, which is beyond uh, the materialistic existence, okay, which is actually pure consciousness, which is Satchidananda. So it is like Chit, it is eternal and it has nothing to do with matter. And then we have uh, the second planet, which is actually the sun. So the sun is actually uh, the significator of a contaminated consciousness, okay, which is bound to this material world. So it is like chitta, okay. So chit becomes chitta, which means we start identifying with this material world. So uh, this material world, as you know, uh, consists of you know different material elements, and we have this material body. So the material world consists of you know, the the material body you know it's like we have this gross body then we have a subtle body which is made of you know the mind intelligence false ego you know the gross body is made of five elements you know earth water air fire ether <clears throat> and then we have the soul okay so these are like the three levels so first we have the soul then there's the subtle body then there's the gross body okay so uh, this is our conception of this material world, which means we uh, identify with certain things, you know, like uh, the sun represents our conception of being in this world, okay? Who who are we basically? Who do we think are, uh, what do we think of ourselves? You know, who do we think we are? You know, what do we identify with? You know, sun is the natural Atma Karak. So he represents the Atma, okay? Now, the Atma here does not refer to the soul at a spiritual sense. The Atma refers to anything that we identify with. So, so if we identify ourselves with our profession, then that is our uh, Atma, basically. Okay, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> if we identify with our family, then that is our Atma, basically. Okay, so as they say sometimes, you know, in movies, they will say, Meri to, Meri to jaan basti hai, Meri Atma basti hai waha, ya us insaan mein. Something like that they say, right? So my soul is in that thing or in that person, you know. <laughs> Why? Which means that is their prominent identification, okay. And then the moon represents our mind, you know. So it's like uh, the sun shows our kingdom, what are the things that we own. But the moon shows how do we feel about the things that we own. Are we happy in life? Are we not happy? You know, you may own a lot, but are you actually happy? Okay, so that is seen by the moon. So we have Jupiter, which is like the pure pure, pure, purest form of consciousness, which has nothing to do with the material world. And because of material desires, now we are here in this material world, which is the Surya. And then we, uh, we, we are either happy with our existence or we are not happy, which is actually the moon. So this is like, you know, the three levels. Okay. So therefore I said, you know, you also have to check uh, where is your Jupiter, your sun uh, along with your moon, you know, to understand uh, Leo ascendance, because uh, for Leo ascendants, since Sun is the Lord of the first house, so this conception of self, you know, this conception of owning something, this conception of being somebody, uh, being very strongly opinionated is very true. So therefore, if you find Leo Lagna people, you will see that uh, they can be very opinionated, you know, they have an opinion on everything, anything and everything sometimes. <laughs> Why does this happen? Because they identify with everything that goes on in this world for them, okay, because uh, that conception of being is like their first house, and first house is actually your intelligence, not like uh, the materialistic intelligence, but the way you think and the way you behave in life, okay. The first house is like your first uh, instinct, okay, it's like the first impression sometimes. So, therefore, for Leo ascendants, you will see that uh, they would love to give their opinions all the time, uh, sometimes even without being asked, okay? It's like they might have a tendency to give uh, unwarranted advice sometimes, or maybe most of the times, <laughs> because they feel that uh, they are related to everything in life and they should have an opinion, you know, that they, they should, they, they strongly, firmly believe that uh, everybody should look the world uh, through their eyes, okay? Or at least that is how they try to convince somebody, okay? And uh, because of this, uh, they can make sometimes uh, great friends. They can make very good leaders. You know, they 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 can con they have a very strong uh, power to convince other people about their uh, about their vision, okay? So for Leo Lagnas, it is very 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 important that you have a very good powerful vision in life. Otherwise your life will feel uh, literally lifeless because if you do not have a good vision, then 
what happens is it is like the sun has set, okay, which means the sun is going down or it's in Patal, which is like the fourth house, okay. So therefore, it is very important that you, you know, figure out what you want to do in this life, okay. Now, when I say do, I am very careful. I don't mean to say professionally, okay. So whenever I talk of purpose or, you know, uh, life vision, people always interpret it in terms of career, okay. Not necessarily. You might have a career as a software engineer or as a, you know, IT guy, finance guy, you, you may be into like stock market, you may be into real estate, you may be into any sector, okay, you may be into manufacturing, steel, coal, iron, whatever it is. But that may not be your purpose of life, you know, your purpose of life may be something completely different, maybe you, know, you want to like, you know, sing something, you want to write something, you want to do some cooking, you want to do some, uh, you want to help others, okay. And Leo, if you see in the Kalkurush Kundli, in the original zodiac, is actually the lord of the fifth house, right? Is actually the fifth sign. This is what I mean to say. So Surya is originally a lord of the fifth house. Okay, so the fifth house shows creativity, talents, opinions, uh, things you like and things you dislike. So now when this fifth house becomes the first house, it's like saying that then the person is uh, very much enthusiastic to follow passions, desires, and inclinations in life, okay? So, therefore, for, for Leo ascendants, they may be very particular with things sometimes, okay? They want to do things in a particular way. So, uh, depending on where is your sun, where is your moon, where is your Jupiter, where is your Atma Karaka, uh, these traits can uh, manifest differently in you. So, for example, uh, if your fire signs are very prominent, you know, which means you have many planets in Aries, Leo or Sagittarius, then it can mean that you may be a bit more opinionated than what is necessary, you know, which means you may be going on giving unwanted advice and because of that people may dislike you. Okay, so and on the other hand, if uh, there is a good balance in the chart and not extreme fire energy, then uh, you may give advice when necessary, when required. And people may like to get your advice because people will see that you have a different level of clarity because the sun also represents light. So therefore, the sun shows, you know, clarity. It's like, you know, what is there, what is not there. Okay, you can clearly see something. So this is one good thing about your ascendants. They can, <clears throat> they can very easily uh, see what is coming in the future. Okay, because of their experience and because of their knowledge. So because of this they can be very good leaders okay they can convince others they can lead others and they can move forward ahead okay but the only problem is this can sometimes become very dictatorial where you dismiss everybody else's opinions and then you uh, want to convince everybody that your way is the only way it's like my way or highway okay so therefore uh, the, as I said, I'm repeating once again, if you want to be the best as a Leo Ascendant or even as a Leo Moon sign or as a Leo Sun sign, you must study the life of Lord Ram. You you, you will see, like uh, people, they say, uh, if somebody is very egoistic, you know, you will say, people will say, oh, maybe he's a strong Leo, she's strong Leo, you know. Uh, but actually, if you study the life of Lord Ram, you will see he was not egoistic at all. He was very humble. So being very egoistical uh, is actually not uh, the best trait for a Leo ascendant. It is the symptom of a bad sun, basically. So if sun is badly placed, then the person can be very egoistic, you know, if, if you are especially a Leo ascendant, because then you have to somehow convince others uh, because you don't believe in yourself. So the, when you don't believe in yourself, you try extra hard to convince everybody that your way is right, your way is highway. Okay, and everybody should believe you. So therefore, uh, if you see somebody is a very good leader, but at the same time, like Lord Ram did, you know, like uh, when Vibhishan came to uh, Lord Ram's assembly, you know, when they, they were, uh, when Ravana had actually uh, dismissed and humiliated and insulted Vibhishan that, you know, get lost, you know, why are you telling me to give, give back Sita Devi? Then we see that Lord Ram is Lord Vishnu himself. He is the supremely powerful person. You know, there's nobody who is more powerful than him. You know, he is, he's, he knows past, present, future. He knows everything. He's uh, all in all, basically. But 
even then uh, he uh, took the opinion of everybody else like he took the op opinion of jambavan of sugreev of um, hanuman ji nal neel angad also you know oh this demon is here now what should we do because vibhishan <clears throat> uh, he was born in a like uh, the rakshasa race right so i mean of course he was uh, his father was a brahmin of course but uh, his associates you know like ravana and all you know they were like rakshasas they were asuras basically so then of course hanuman ji ended up telling that uh, just because he is born in a demoniac uh, family you know his like associates are demoniac uh, although his father was a brahmin it, uh, but it it just does not mean that he will also be demoniac okay we have the examples of uh, pralad maharaj who was also born in a demoniac family whose father was himself a demon but he was not demoniac he's one, he was one of the 12 mahajans right and we also have the example of bali maharaj which is who is also a descendant of pralad maharaj okay so hanuman ji convinced uh, lord ram and everybody that yes you should give vibhishan a chance okay and then we saw vibhishan came inside and he he helped uh, lord ram and the army so much okay mm -hmm. so therefore uh, you have to understand that just by uh, hovering around boasting and dominating is not leadership okay leadership is you lead by example okay you you uh, show your you just don't say something okay as lord ram's uh, lord ram is famous for this right ragukulari ta sada chali aayi pran jaye vachan na jaye so this means when you say something okay you do it so for leos it is very important that you not only uh, keep speaking things but you also do things okay because otherwise people will not respect you and for leos um, if they are not respected somewhere then they cannot stay there it's it is like it's of paramount importance to them that they are respected uh, in society okay and especially in a circle or in some group in some club in some setting you know in some community if they feel that you know oh, they are not getting the right amount of respect then they are most likely to push off from that place and they uh, now this can be derogatory but this can be good also at times good in the sense you know if people are are disrespecting you then you know leo lagna people they cannot tolerate disrespect you know then they are about to move away from that okay but what i am trying to say here is that either you are respected or not irrespective of that you should act in a way that is respectable and that happens when you are true to your word okay so if you say something if you make promises and you can't deliver then uh, people don't respect you right and why should they respect you <laughs> because you are not doing what you said that you will do of course if you tried your best and still you couldn't do then that is a separate uh, thing because it's not your fault you tried your best you tried 100% but you still didn't make it because your best need not be the best okay but if you if you don't try if you're lazy and if you are like uh, irresponsible then this is very bad for leo lagnas because then you will lose all name fame power position authority you know uh, nobody will like to associate with you and on the other hand if you do what you said you know if you are true to your word you will be the most loved and cherished person uh, in the room because people will trust you uh, as as the sun you know the sun always comes up right the sun is always there on time you will never see the sun is late okay not not only the sun even the moon but especially uh, the example of the sun is given that they always show up they always deliver okay so therefore now for a leo lagna it is very important that you under promise and you over deliver okay rather than over promising and under delivering it can be in any area of life you know in friendships in relationships and in terms of your profession also but it is very important that you stay true to your word and leo lagna people they can also have a hard time forgiving others you know because of this uh, blunt or blatant ego that they have which is again not a typical of a good leo lagna because Now, uh, if you see Lord Ram's example, you will see when um, Vibhishan came actually, you know, to surrender to Lord Ram. Then uh, Lord Ram said, you know, what to speak of Vibhishan today? If uh, he says that, you know, famous shloka, right? Sugrivo va Ravan va. He says, what to speak of Vibhishan? If today Ravan also comes, I'll forgive him. Okay. So therefore, uh, if you feel you have a hard time forgiving, then uh, you need to practice, you know, some gratitude, and you need to realize that. everybody has faults including yourself right and myself and so 
Now, many times Leo ascendants they think, okay, I am tolerating somebody, you know, ah, oh, this person is so difficult to tolerate, you know. Uh, another thing which Leos have a hard time is uh, tolerating incompetent people. Okay, so you tell your friend, hey, do this, you know, uh, can you help me here? Can you help me there? And then he or she do does, but uh, it's not the best that you expect. And then you blast on them. So uh, Leos are very competent sometimes. They're very smart. They know how things work. Uh, but that does not mean that uh, you expect that everybody is also like that. And you may be smart in some area of life, but you may not be the most smartest person in the room in the every, in every room, right? You may be very smart with finances, but you have you might have no idea with you know health, you know, or it could be the other way around. So therefore, for Leo Lagna people, it's very important that you identify your skill set, you identify your talents, you identify your uh, good areas, your strong points, but at the same time, you do not judge others because they do not have those uh, strong points like you in your area okay so therefore understand that everybody has uh, limitations including you and everybody has their strengths and weaknesses okay so do not judge people by their weaknesses and if you see that you can help somebody uh, as a leo ascendant to uh, improve their uh, strengths and negate their weaknesses well then do it but only when you are asked okay so another thing about leos as i am repeating for the third time uh, they are addicted to giving unwanted advice and this is one of the reasons why <clears throat> they may be disliked sometimes okay so as i said dovetail this in a positive way you know do big things and shake up the world but with your goodness and your kindness and uh, not just by giving unwanted advice okay so one of the golden mantras for a Leo ascendant should be, you know, um, only give advice if somebody asks you, okay? And um, it should also not be the, oh, somebody has asked me now, I give like a two-hour lecture, okay? <laughs> you should be very uh, compassionate, uh, hear more. This is also one of the struggles of a Leo ascendant. They are excellent at speaking. They're very charismatic and they're very... Uh, flamboyant you know they're very smart they can like understand what's going on very quick you know it's like uh, you throw them anywhere they will somehow emerge victorious uh, but at the same time the other challenge is that they are so much obsessed about themselves that uh, they cannot hear anybody okay so they always have a tough time struggling in relationships okay we'll come to relationships in a bit <laughs> <clears throat> so therefore many times you will see leo ascendants you know they uh, because of their ego and arrogance they either don't get married at all or you know they are like too picky in choosing their spouse you know oh he doesn't have this she doesn't have that you know uh, but because of this they may suffer from loneliness okay because it's like as they say you know in a one uh what, what is that in hindi they say na ek jungle mein ek hi sher rehta hai. <laughs> Uh, sing sing ya share whatever you say right so in one uh, forest there can be one lion only right so uh, so because of that what happens is uh, they hammer too much on their spouse sometimes and they they have delayed marriages and all this you know because uh, they believe that everybody should be like them you know good looking or you know smart uh, financially well to do but then everybody may not be like that okay so <clears throat> For Leo Ascendants, you have to understand that uh, it is good to be a leader and at the same time, you also should have compassion, right? So this is again exemplified by Lord Ram, you know, very compassionate, right? Till the last moment uh, in the Battle of Lanka, he was compassionate. He, he was ready to forgive Ravana anytime if he would hand over Sita Devi and uh, fall at his feet and apologize, you know, but Ravana could not hear the good words, right? So therefore, you need to understand that uh, competence, skill, uh, stardom, uh, intelligence, you know, attraction, beauty, flamboyance, you know, knowledge can take you only a bit far. But if you don't have compassion, if you hammer people on their weaknesses, then nobody will like you, okay? And if you encourage others, you inspire others to be themselves and uh, to uh, follow their passions and then uh, to elevate themselves, uh, well, you will be the most wanted person in the room. Okay, So therefore, Leos, you have a very good chance to be a good motivator or a good leader, but uh, don't spoil it by uh, being too harsh on people. Okay, Of course, 
Uh, when somebody has done something wrong, then you, if you are in authority position, you might have to punish them to a certain extent, but do it in a compassionate way, okay? Uh, Leos can sometimes uh, give disproportionate punishments, okay, which is not very advisable. It might turn against you in the long run, okay? So therefore, for Leos, it's very important that uh, they have a good guide, you know, because, you know, see, the son is actually uh, the king and the king always has a minister, right? So, Leo Lagna people, you should always have a guru or a guide or a counselor who can actually help you understand how the world works and when should you punish whom? Because if you see in the ancient Vedic times, you know, there would always be a Raj Guru, a Raj Purohit and a Kul Guru, as they say right um, and in case of lord ram we saw you know like vashishta muni was all, always there so lord ram as you know he is supremely knowledgeable he doesn't need any agastya rishi vashishta muni or durvasa rishi anybody he doesn't need anybody he doesn't need vishwamitra he doesn't need anybody okay but still he would take advice from them and this is this is why he's maryada purushottam he would exemplify that even though i am most capable I'm the best, not only in Ayodhya, I'm the best in the entire world, in all of the worlds combined. There is you know, nobody better than me. But I still, as a humble person, I still take opinions from Vishwamitra Muni. He took um, the Aditya Hrida Stotra Mantra from you know, Agastya Muni. Then he took all the Divyastras, the divine weapons which with which he killed Ravana actually, you know, and all the other Rakshasas from the great sage Vishwamitra Muni, right? So, Lord Ram's life perfectly exemplifies how a Leo ascendant should be and how he should not be the other way around, okay? <clears throat> so, therefore, uh, for Leos, uh, their hobby skills are also very important. You know, they are quite passionate about what they like in life, what they love in life, and they are very much interested to uh, practice what they believe, okay? So, because Leo, as you know, is the original fifth house. So, uh, Leo ascendants, they are also uh, quite uh, self-obsessed and they might spend too much money on their appearance sometimes, you know, because they want to look the best. And uh, it's not about looking, you know, it's it's about that feel-good factor, okay? And if they have uh, anything uh, in connection to royalty, they would like to boast, you know, they, they may boast, you know, oh, my father is like uh, this officer, my mother is that uh, that officer that teacher you know, they always love to boast you know my friend is here my son is here my daughter is here you know so they love to take uh, limelight from anywhere that is possible <laughs> okay so this is a very way a quick way you can identify a leo ascendant that they will always keep giving references of somebody who is very powerful who is very close to them okay or even if that person is not close but you will see they will drag that person in their circle. Somehow they will say, oh, yeah, yeah, he was my classmate. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, she was my schoolmate, you know. <laughs> so this is, this is another quick way to identify a Leo ascendant. Now, this is not bad necessarily, but uh, can put off people sometimes if you are unnecessarily quoting things in uh, unwanted places, okay? So, for example, you go to a gathering of friends and you are boasting about your family or your achievements. You know, nobody may like that because everybody wants to boast about their own achievements, right? Nobody likes to hear about others' achievements. So, this can mean that people are a bit uh, intimidated by you sometimes, okay? So, therefore, uh, please um, please share your knowledge and your talents and your traits, uh, but uh, re please refrain from intimidating others by trying to prove that you, you are the best, okay? So, this is about uh, the first house and then we can go to the second house, you know, so number two is actually the sign number six, which is Virgo. Okay, so wherever the sign Virgo is, there is anxiety. Okay, so for Leo ascendants, you will always feel that you can very frequently see that they are very anxious about their family, you know, about their mother, father, and you know, about... Uh, their family lineage you know they can be too obsessed with it or anything that happens um, they, they will lose their mind okay and especially uh, if you have number three in your date of birth along with this then it can be more because three in numerology is the number of jupiter and you know, jupiter represents family as you know right so 
if you uh, if you have a family if you're married you know then uh, you 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 are very concerned about your family you are more concerned uh, than normal people and there's nothing wrong about it but uh, the problem occurs when you try to control them okay so uh, if you are a parent then if you're if you're a leo lagna then you might be very particular okay that oh leo um, i'm leo i think this way you know my son my daughter should also think the same way but that may not be the case because one of them may also be a leo lagna so then what do you do right so the same thing may happen with your father mother or with your spouse okay so therefore uh they are very considerate and they love to give attention to their family and also get attention from their family and family members uh, and they are always thinking Virgo is over processing okay so therefore uh, if you feel there is over processing going on with your family members then you need to back off a bit and you need to realize that at the end everybody does what they want to do okay you can't stop people from doing things what which they want beyond a certain extent you can't do that okay so therefore, focus on your family, be obsessed about it, nothing wrong with it, but uh, when it gets beyond a certain extent, it will hamper your mind, your peace. And the second house also represents your finances, you know, and Virgo is another a sign which is very concerned about finances. So the Leo Lagna people, they are very much concerned about their whole you know like you know especially a profession or power position you know it's like uh, they're a bit obsessed with it you know because the sign Virgo is in the second house which is actually the sign where you which shows what you hold in life okay holding and hoarding basically <laughs> and Mercury is also the Karka for the 10th house which shows you know money wealth and all this so you may be a bit too obsessed with all this you know which is uh, a bit uh, which is not the best for you in the long run uh, so you you can be concerned there's nothing wrong in being concerned it can help you to do big things in life so that's one good thing you know using your talents for money nothing wrong with it perfect uh, but if you're obsessed then it can uh, give you nightmares sometimes okay so please refrain from becoming obsessed uh, beyond a certain extent okay? everybody is obsessed about something because everybody has a sign Virgo, right? All the time. <laughs> but um, getting obsessed beyond a certain limit only uh, does harm to us, okay? And then we go to the third house, which is actually the sign Libra, which is actually ruled by Venus, which is a very interesting energy because if you see third house is originally uh, the sign Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury. And uh, Mercury and Venus are friends. Right, so you will see that the Leo see wherever Libra or Taurus is, you know, there is attraction in that. Okay, so for example, if uh, for Leos, because Libra is in the third house, so their communication is very attractive. Okay, it's like when they are speaking, when they are giving some presentation, uh, they look very attractive. Not not just by facial or by appearance, but the way they conduct, the way they communicate, it's very. It's very attractive and it's very enchanting. It's enamoring. You can put any <laughs> any term that you wish. And this is very good because uh, they can convince people, as I said before. You know, this is why uh, for Leos, it is easy to convince people because Venus is the lord of the third house. Okay. And wherever Venus is, you know, like depending on your chart, uh, if Venus is well placed, you will, this attraction will be even more. Okay. And if Venus is not well placed, then uh, you will not be able to communicate very effectively. You may be very smart, but you won't be able to negotiate. Okay. And that is why Leo Ascendant people, they can be very good negotiators depending on where Venus is. Because third house is the house of negotiation and Libra is also the sign of negotiation. So when these two energies combine, then you have a very good negotiator who is born. Okay, but if Venus and Sun, they are not well placed, uh, then the person may try to go on the other end of the uh, equation, like, you know, only thinking of oneself or not thinking of oneself at all. Okay, so therefore, uh, please see how do you negotiate generally in life, you know, and then uh, you can see how are these energies playing out for you. Okay, your real life is the best example of your horoscope. And then we go into the fourth house. So what is the fourth house? Fourth house mm -hmm, ruled by 
Scorpio, it's ruled by the sign Scorpio, which is lauded by Mars, right? So for Leo ascendants, mother, oh wow, interesting. <laughs> because the moon, which is actually the original fourth lord, gets debilitated in the sign of Scorpio. So this is a very intense energy, you know. Uh, people think Leo ascendants, they are very much uh, concerned about their father or, you know, fatherly figures. But they don't understand that uh, they have the sign Scorpio in their fourth house, you know. So wherever Scorpio is, there is intensity, okay. So uh, this is why Leo Lagna people, they are very much uh, obsessed with their family. Again, as I said, you know, because second house is Virgo and fourth house is Scorpio. So one, one house is uh <clears throat> your uh like uh, the second house shows uh in this case you know as virgo you you are like uh, too much obsessed about it okay and fourth house is intensity so um, combine them you know family obsession and uh, intensity with your mother okay very strong energy okay so so for your ascendants uh, you might have either the best relationship with your mother or maybe the worst relationship sometimes so that will depend on how your moon is placed and how where is your actually uh the fourth lord which is actually mars okay so for leo ascendants because you have virgo in the second house so it is very important that you have a decent good relationship with your father and with your mother or at least with one of them because otherwise you know uh, because if none of them none of uh, them are i mean if you don't have a relationship with uh, any of them you know then at least you know somebody in your family maybe your children your uh, siblings you know you should have some good relationship otherwise that will bother you very much and with the mother the relationship can be very unpredictable sometimes because of scorpio you know it's like you, know, you are fighting today you are like um, you're very angry at each other and then tomorrow you are like oh you're the best friends nothing ever happened okay so therefore uh, for your ascendants if you have a cherished relationship with your mother then you are very blessed because the Scorpio energy is acting in a positive way otherwise uh, it can be a nightmare okay so try your best of course uh, your mother is also an individual you cannot uh, control the way she thinks beyond a certain extent you can try to influence her if she's going in the wrong side but uh, you can't do much okay so therefore uh, try to see if you can uh, if it is very bad then try to have a at least a professional relationship at the, at the least okay and then uh, we also have uh, the fourth house for property right and mars is the karga for property you know like land and all this mars and saturn so leo ascendant people they might be considerably interested in assets you know like having property land and all this okay not necessarily everyone depending on the placement of mars and saturn if mars saturn are linked with the kendra houses or the 10th house then they may also have a profession in real estate okay so this is very interesting because uh, every house is acting in the chart and it's acting interestingly and then after the fourth house, we have the fifth house, which is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is in your fifth house. Sagittarius is lauded by Jupiter. Jupiter is again ideals. <laughs> fifth house is again opinion. So now you see, it's like a mixture of both. So they, this is one of the reasons why Leo Lagna people are very opinionated. Okay, and not just because Leo is in their first house. People think, oh, Leo in the first house, you know, you're very opinionated. You are Leo Lagna after all. No, it's not like that. You have to see the fifth house. Okay, and Leo people, you are very blessed because uh, the greatest benefit Jupiter is uh, ruling your uh, best house. You know, fifth house is the best house in the in the chart. So. If you uh, if you are uh, blessed with a good Jupiter, then you are exceptionally lucky. Okay, so for example, if Jupiter is in your first house, you know, in Leo, in Digbala, or in the fifth house, or in the ninth house, you know, you are you are exceptionally lucky because then it satisfies the purpose of being a guru. Because as I said, you know, Lord Ram always would take guidance from Vashishtha Muni. Of course, he didn't need it, but he would do it, right? So, but we need guidance always. So, 
if Jupiter is well placed for you, then this is like the best blessing you can have. So this means whenever you will have problems, you will get some good guidance from people to come out of it. Okay, so this is very interesting because a king without a minister is like a dictator. So what is the difference between modern days dictatorship and ancient days monarchy? You know, like uh, what is the difference? So in the ancient days, the kings would rule, but under the guidance of a Brahmin. Okay, and if they would not act in a proper way, the Brahmin had the power to dismiss them completely. As we have the example of Srimad Bhagavatam, there we saw, we see the example of King uh, Vena. Okay, Vena and Anga, that story, I will not go much into detail. But uh, Vena was a very sinful person. And then uh, the, the Brahmins, uh, they saw that this person is the king, but he's not doing good. So, just by a hunkar, hum. <clears throat> they gave a hunkar. This is like a, it's like a subtle curse which they gave. And then uh, Vena died immediately on the spot. And then they churned uh, Vena's body. And then came out the great Maharaj Prithu, who is also one of the uh, Shaktyavesh avatars of Lord Vishnu, right? So, therefore, for Leo ascendants, if you are lacking a good guide in your life, then you should spend some time and resources in getting a good guide. Because uh, sometimes you may feel that you don't need anybody. This is one of the other problems with the Leo is that they feel they don't need anybody. They are self-sufficient. Okay, uh, But actually, it's not the case because everybody needs somebody at some point of their life. Okay, So, therefore, the more you have a good guide, uh, the guide can actually channelize your energies in the right direction. And if you have that, then you are blessed beyond limits. Okay, So for Leo Ascendants, whenever I'm looking at their chart for any consultation, I always see where is Jupiter. Okay, If Jupiter is well placed, you can have a beautiful consultation. You can speak things and that person will actually understand. But uh, if the person's Jupiter is not good, then... Uh, you will speak to them, but they will always argue with you. You know, they'll say, oh, what you're speaking is not right. You know, what you're speaking is not correct. So then I know I'm heading in for a very uh, tough time with a client who is a Leo Lagna, okay? Even more than the planet Sun, okay? And then we have the sixth house, which is mm, sixth house lauded by Aquarius, which is... Saturn himself, right? <clears throat> uh, sorry, Aquarius, uh, Capricorn, which is again uh, Saturn himself. So, for Leo, the sixth and the seventh, both are lauded by Saturn himself, okay? Now, what is the sixth house? The sixth house shows <clears throat> enemies, you know, and Saturn. Saturn, uh, especially Mars represents enemies, but Saturn is also the card for the sixth house, okay? So, for Leo ascendants, uh, see, wherever Saturn is there, you will find some difficulty there. Difficulty means not by default. So, for Leo ascendants, 6th Lord, 7th Lord is Saturn. So, people think, oh, Leos will always have a bad marriage. Leos will always have problematic career. No. You have to understand what this means. The 6th house is lauded by Saturn, which means it is a bit difficult for you to behave in a Saturnian way in that house, which means what is the sixth house? Sixth house is everyday work, okay, uh, routine, repetitive work, which can, uh, which can make you feel very bored at times. You know, one of the other things about Leo's is they are, except bored exceptionally quickly. Okay, very soon they are bored. You know, <clears throat> so because of this, they they may not like to do routine, repetitive tasks always. You know, so they may be good at you know like giving a vision, but uh, when it comes to actually doing the doing the work, they may struggle a bit. Okay. So this means you can do good as a leader or a, as a manager or as a coach or a consultant. You know, you may not be like uh, somebody who is actually doing the work. So for Leo's, it is good if you look for some managerial role, you know, rather than getting doing hands-on work because you might have a tough time doing that. And then we have uh, the seventh house, which is again lauded by Saturn, right? Aquarius. So Aquarius is very interesting. Again, Wherever Saturn is lording, there will be some difficulty, which means Leos have a difficulty in 
being like Saturn in the seventh house, which means um, they have a tough time being humble sometimes. Okay, in front of their spouse, they are they may not agree to their mistakes. You know, uh, you know one of the easy ways you can identify. Uh, a Leo is by uh, pointing out their mistakes and they will be like, uh, they'll be in, outraged when you point, you know, they will say, oh, so what about you? You know, you have 10 mistakes. You know, I may have one, you have 10 mistakes. Okay. So Saturn is humility, you know, accepting your weaknesses, your flaws, your faults. And, you know, if you can't do that in a marriage, then uh, maybe marriage is not for you. Okay, and when I say seventh house, it just does not mean marriage. It means, you know, your <clears throat> overall interactions with people. So for Leo Lagna, it is very important that whenever you are in some partnership, you give that person also limelight. Okay, you also let, uh, you respect that person because it is directly opposite of your first house. You know, it is very difficult for a Leo to share limelight. It is, you know, they... They get nightmares whenever they think, oh, I have, I have to share the stage with someone. Oh. <laughs> it's like uh, life-threatening for them sometimes. You know, This is what I have seen. <clears throat> they love to take all the credit, you know, but that is why they feel difficulty. Seventh house is lauded by Saturn. So this is a difficult area, okay? But of course, it depends on where your Saturn is, you know, and uh, which planets are in your seventh house. So they will actually tell you what is going on with your married life. Okay, so therefore, um, try to understand that you will have to make adjustments, compromises, you know, otherwise uh, marriage may not be your cup of tea. Okay, so so sometimes I see Leo ascendants, they are quite concerned, you know, who they will marry, like, you know, what what kind of status will that person have. But it is important that you understand that you will have to eventually the you, you will eventually have to value that person because of who or she who he or she is you cannot just value them uh, because of their family or you know their uh, name fame status okay <clears throat> or because how they make you look like with them okay so this is also a challenge for leos so try to value people for who they are internally rather than looking at their status and name fame uh, always okay uh, and then we have the 8th house. 8th Lord is again Jupiter. Okay, 5th Lord, 8th Lord. Now, 8th house again shows intensity. And Jupiter shows your ideals. You know, Pisces shows uh, your ability to give up things. Okay, now this is very interesting because the sign which is supposed to give up things is actually lording the house of intensity. So, because of this, Leos may be very unpredictable sometimes. You know, it's like... Oh, I will completely ditch this thing or ditch that person or I'm completely obsessed with somebody. Okay, so for Leos, it's very important that they strike a balance in life because uh, you you may be like, you may be so obsessed with somebody sometimes, you know, that you are losing your mind. You are not able to function in your daily life, you know, because you are so obsessed with somebody. But... <clears throat> The moment you see that, oh, that person is not serving my interests, you know, or that person is uh, not doing what I want them to do, then you dismiss them. You you just kick them out of your life. Okay, this is, this is not very good. You may have fights or quarrels or tribulations with them, but you have to understand that everybody has problems and everybody will lose their mind sometimes. Okay, but just uh, because of one or two incidences, if you kick out somebody from their life or you dismiss some ideology okay not only humans also ideologies oh this thing did not work for me it will never work for me okay so you may get into this obsession of like uh, this this pendulum you know bhoga tyaga you are obsessed and you are detached okay that detachment is not original detachment it's like a uh, fake okay so if you are actually uh, detached from something or somebody then make sure you are detached in the right way because of the right reasons you know not because of the reasons like you know that person didn't serve me or that idea didn't serve me but it served me once and i was attached and now i dismiss that okay so this is not uh this does not mean that you cannot change your opinion, <clears throat> but you should refrain from getting into extremes. Okay, this is very, very, very important. Uh, otherwise, people may not be able to uh, trust you because you may be very unpredictable and whimsical. Okay, then we have uh, the ninth house, which is again lauded by Aries. 
okay it is uh, ninth house like surya is the karaka for the first house and also the ninth house as you know <clears throat> right because the ninth house shows the father and mars is the original lord of the first house aries right kalpurush the first house so leo ascendants they are very much concerned about you know their father sometimes okay you will uh, you will always see that now this does not mean they have a good or a bad relationship always but it can get some uh, a bit intense sometimes you know you you may wherever Aries sees that thing may anger you okay or that person may be very angry so your your father uh, may be very angry at you for no reason sometimes <laughs> or maybe your father is angry in general okay uh, but it could be the other way around your father is not angry but you are very angry with your father for some reason so for leo you know the second house is virgo which is you know like uh, overthinking the fourth house is scorpio which is obsession <clears throat> and ninth house is anger okay so if they have a great relationship with their father then they are very happy you know the father will motivate them you know do this do that go and achieve out in the world and be successful and if they have a bad relationship with their father, oh, they suffer. Now, especially <clears throat> Leo ascendants, I have seen, you know, uh, they are very much close to their father and mother. You know, they may not love them or like them, but somehow they are very concerned and uh, they really have a hard time if one of them unfortunately leaves this world. Okay, so this is true with the father or the mother. Of course, it's not easy for anybody to stay with their parents. Lucky are those people who still have their parents okay but specifically for leo lagna the presence of the mother father even if they don't have the best relationship but even if they have a decent cordial relationship but their the sense of being or presence itself is a very big thing okay uh, that uh, makes the leo lagna people very motivated okay and ninth house is also the house of gurus you know so again you know intense relationship with your guru so it can happen sometimes, you know, you had a guru or a guide sometimes uh, with whom you had some fights and you then you disassociated, you know. But this is also something which I have seen very frequently with Leos because wherever Mars, Aries is, there is anger, okay. But again, Aries is also the sign of motivation. It's the first house. So ninth house uh, has Aries and the fifth house has Sagittarius. So very strongly motivated individuals, Leo Lagna people. But at the same time, you have to ensure that the energy is channelized in a proper direction, okay? And then after the ninth house, we reach the 10th house, okay? The 10th house is a very important house for the Leo Ascendants because <clears throat> 10th house is the house of name, fame and uh, Leos, you love name, fame and limelight, right? You are too obsessed with it sometimes. And also because... The sun, which is your Lagna Lord, gets directional strength, gets Digbali there, okay? And this is something I forgot to speak about the ninth house. Your Lagna Lord gets exalted. And this we will discuss in the next video, like where, where does the planet get exalted, debilitated and all this. But the tenth house is Taurus and is lorded by Venus, okay? So again, as I said, wherever there is Venus, there is attraction, which means, you know, the third house, and then there is the 10th house. So third house is communication and 10th house is, you know, leadership, profession, um, authority, power and all this, you know. So, so they are very good naturally, like they are naturally uh, born leaders, okay. The only problem is they may be like dictatorial or they may lack vision sometimes, okay. So leadership will be there, but it depends on what is, uh, how is the horoscope playing out. Okay, so they are also very concerned uh, about their profession. They may be uh, very obsessed with luxuries in the profession. Okay, so they may uh, like to be in a space which is a bit luxurious and they want their own room, table and, you know, uh, I hope you understand, right? <laughs> <clears throat> it's difficult for them to work in some normal casual setting, okay? Because Saturn is also the sixth lord. So they have a tough time doing routine work. Okay. So they are good as managers. And they like some admiration, you know. So if you want to, you know, impress some Leo Lagna, maybe. 
uh, speaking good words, you know, praising them will take you very far. Okay, no, not for everybody, but yeah, at times, you know, if you praise them, they would really like you. And then we have the 11th house, right, which is the house of Gemini, which is lauded by Mercury again. So Leo people, they have a long list of circles, friends and acquaintances. OK, they, they have like a, the list is never ending, you know. <clears throat> One of the quick ways to identify a Leo ascendant is everybody somehow knows them. You know, Oh, your friend knows them, your Parents know them, maybe your colleagues know them, everybody knows them. You know, if you go in a company and there's a Leo ascendant, you will say, oh, do you know this person? Oh, yeah, yeah, who doesn't know? Now, that person may be known for good reasons or for wrong reasons. Okay, I'm not saying that person will be known for good reasons always. But the person will be known somehow. Okay, it's like you, you may love them or you hate them, but you can't ignore them. It's like that. Okay, and uh, this is... Good, but this can also be challenging in one way that the person has so many contacts, but the contacts are very superficial, okay, which which means, uh, which does not mean that they don't help you, but they help you, uh, but you like genuine connections sometimes, you know, so you may have struggles with your uh, married, married life, your love life, because you may get too much attention from the members of the opposite sex, okay. And because of that, your spouse can feel insecure sometimes. You know, or you may uh, believe too much uh, on your friends and you may not uh, pay heed to your parents. You know, So your parents may be unhappy because of that. So nonetheless, either ways, you have to understand that you, know, you have a big circle. So use the circle for your advantage. You know, uh, Get good contacts, You know, help people, uh, help others, take help from them. Nothing wrong with it. But also look for genuine connection okay <clears throat> this is very 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 important okay and last but not the least we have the 12th house which is lauded by the moon very very interesting <laughs> moon uh, 12th house is the house where jupiter gets exalted the fifth lord eighth lord is getting exalted in your 12th house this is very 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 interesting because all your ascendants See, wherever there is moon, that place shows what will make you happy. So for Leo Ascendants, if you feel that life is miserable, you are not happy, you are depressed, you are stressed, you are messed, <laughs> then maybe you should learn to detach. Maybe you are too much obsessed about controlling things, you know, letting things go your own way. So therefore, you need to detach. And the more you detach, the more you let things re uh, turn out themselves, the more you let people behave in their natural way rather than forcing them to behave how you want them to behave. You will understand life is much better. All right. So if you have too many expectations from people, you should reduce your expectations and that will make you much more happier. All right. So overall, to summarize, Leo's natural leaders, uh, very good at administration, government-related work, like, you know, um, consulting, coaching, negotiating. These are your strong points, you know, your interests, your passions, your hobbies, desires. They're very strong. You know, it's good to make a passion out of your profession if you're a Leo Lagna. Intense relationship with your father, mother, you know, family, obsessed and difficulty detaching and uh, difficulty doing uh, mundane routine repetitive work all right and yeah flamboyant and very attractive and at the same time can be very dictatorial all right so thank you very much for your patience and please let me know down in the comments if you made it so far <laughs> i hit the thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and let me know in the comments where is your sun, moon, your Atma Karaka and your Jupiter and how is life treating you as a Leo Lagna. All right. Thank you so much. Jai Shri Ram.